Mr. and Mrs. Heyman, at any point tonight, while we're trying to make communication with you, we'd love to learn more about you. And we hear somebody playing his day walk down the hallway on the second floor. And so we came back in and we went all over the house and there was nothing. Holy crap. Whoa, what the hell? Ooh, did you hear that voice? Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Yes. And I was like, is anybody here, you know, or anything? And there was a growl. If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking <laughs> crazy, this man. That is lighter. <laughs> that is it. Oh, oh, something just touched my hand. Well, gentlemen, we are officially inside the Heyman house, and this is one of the coolest old historic homes that I think we've investigated in years. Absolutely. Now, one thing about this house is that ever since it broke onto the paranormal scene two years ago, it has been absolutely flooded with paranormal investigators because of the amount of activity that this house has. It's believed the former residents are still here and maybe even some spirits that come and go as they please. But when the owner, Teresa, and her husband bought this house, they were shocked at how much activity this place had. The house was built in 1894 and it was built by William Edgar Heyman. He was the prosecuting attorney in Sutton for eight years in the late 1800s. When we first bought the house, I mean, you have to understand it was in very bad shape. So we were, my husband and I were really working on it. And he was up here one day by himself. I was homesick and he was down in the basement. Well, I come up, I finally decided to come up and check on him because I couldn't get a hold of him. So I come up and um, I tried to come in the front door with my key and I, I couldn't get in. So I just went around back and came in the back door, used my key and come in the back door. And I hollered at him and he, of course he came upstairs and I told him, I was like, you know, the front door's not opening. He said it was just opening a little bit ago. And I was like, well, I couldn't get in. Even with my key, I couldn't get in. And I just happened to get to look and, and there's a little slide lock on the door and I was like, hold on. So I, I just pushed the door back and I just slid the little lock over. And when I slid it, I mean, the door just came right open. And he just looked at me. My husband, you have to understand, he's never had anything to do with the paranormal. So when I told him, I was like, well, you know, that lock was on there. And he told me, he said, now, Teresa, he said, I specifically left that door unlocked. He was like, I know that door was unlocked. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about this basement one thing that people believe amplifies paranormal activity is the presence of running water. And if you look right here down by our feet, there is actually a small spring that runs through this basement. And this right here might be the reason for the curious and unexplainable things that happen inside this house. They believe this is a good conduit for energy. And maybe that's why the spirits are so active here at the Heyman house. In addition to the river right outside, right across the street. That's right. So, I mean, it's just it's like a conflux. That same day when he was in the basement, he said that he was down there and he was draining the hot water tank. And he said that there was, and he, he didn't know what it was. He said it was probably six inches. He said it was kind of oval round. And he said it was under the stairs, the steps. And he said it was flickering. And he said, Tracy, he said, I sat there and looked at, I watched that thing. He said, for a good minute. And the water stopped to the hot water tank. He said, so, you know, he said, I got it started again and turned back around. He said, it was gone. So, I mean, he was like, what did I see? <laughs> Which I told him, I said, you probably saw an orb. Uh, you probably saw a spirit. It is very creepy. It's not 
as big as you would think it would be down here, which it's it's a lot. It's very confining down here, and yeah, definitely feels completely different from the rest of the house. So I'll be interested to see how that adds up later. Emma, Mr. Heyman's first wife, she passed away in a house. She was 43. We can't find a death certificate. I can't find a death certificate anywhere. Everybody's looked for it. But I did, we did find a small little newspaper clipping and all it said was uh, Mrs. Heyman had passed away at her home and would be buried there. And that's, that's it. I mean, it was just a very small thing. And then Mr. Heyman, he seven years after that, he married uh, Ethel. It was his second wife. And uh, she passed away in the house. She had breast cancer. And she, she passed away here in the house in 1932. These bedrooms up here have been known for their paranormal activity, the movement, the figures. And a lot of people believe that's the Heyman family. Uh, Mr. Heyman had two wives, starting with Emma. She died in the house, and then Ethel also died in the house. A lot of people hear women's voices, people, women screaming, women crying. And uh, Teresa even pointed out uh, that, that she had a, a mother and daughter come through and just do their own little self-guided tour. And she said in one of the bathrooms up here, they saw a full apparition of a lady crying with her face in her hands, like she was crying at the sink of the bathroom. So far, a lot of potential for residual yeah, hauntings here. Residual hauntings, but if there was an intelligent energy of the family, to me, this house with as beautiful as it is, if I had lived here and this was my home and I died, I would stay here. Yeah, like, why would you yeah. want to leave? Yeah, this house is amazing. Yeah. We have a tall, slender, um, gray-like fish figure, which I honestly think, and a lot of people think that it's Mr. Heyman still here. We was leaving one day and we got out in the driveway and we hear somebody playing his day walk down the hallway on the second floor. And my husband looked at me, he was like, Teresa, somebody's in the house. And I was like, okay. I said, no, there's not, but we'll go in and look. And so we came back in and we went all over the house and there was nothing, there was nobody. And I think Mr. Heyman paces, so he paces on the second floor. Mr. and Mrs. Heyman? My name's Steve. My friends Ryan and Dave here. We're just gonna be visiting tonight. We're here with permission from Teresa. We hope that it's okay with you. At any point tonight, while we're trying to make communication with you, we'd love to learn more about you. As long as you're comfortable and you're okay with that, we hope that you are. The gentleman that we bought the house from, I didn't get to talk to him very much, but the one time I did talk to him, he, I asked him about the house, and he said that he had only had one thing happen to him, and he said he had stopped here on his way home from work. He said he'd, he'd worked out of town, and he said, I was just tired. He says, I stopped there to spend the night. And he said, I was in the room upstairs, which is the blue room. We call it the blue room. And he said, I wake up in the middle of the night. He said, there's a woman standing there looking at me. And he was like, I'm not gonna lie. I got up and went to Mason County. He said, I left, I went home. He said, I didn't want no part of that. But in the attic, Mr. Heyman is in the attic a lot. We call the one room up there, it's the, they call it the octagon room, but we believe it was his office. To me, this is probably my favorite room in the house because it's just, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's creepy, the vibe in here is weird. And uh, you know, like you were saying, this was supposedly his office and I'm sure he would have spent a lot of time in here overlooking the city and everything like that. And I'm excited to, to come back up here later and, and investigate up here. West Virginia Paranormal were here and they were in the attic and they were in what we call Mr. Heyman's office. And they're just, you know, talking. And next thing you know, I mean, you hear a woman scream. What was that? What was that? What was that? I mean, I was at home watching it live and the scream, it clearly came from inside the house. That experience that she talked about with that scream, that was in this room. 
Oh, I didn't know okay. that. With that loud screaming, that was this room. So this is definitely going to have to be a focus tonight on the investigation. Um, to the sides of the hallway upstairs, on this side, on the left side, there's a huge room. Now that room there, it has a lot of activity. Actually, at one point, I was up there cleaning, and I had a puff of wind just I mean, it hit me right in the face and it blew my hair out. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I just kind of stood there and I was like, is anybody here, you know, or anything? And there was a growl. And now that's the only time I can say that I've ever been to where I left. And I did, I come downstairs and I didn't want no part of that and I left. Well, the sun is already down now. It's that time of year. It gets dark at five o'clock, but that gives us a lot more time to investigate. So it's a little bit after eight o'clock right now. And I think it's time for us to get ready to set up abandonment, leave this house alone, let the cameras roll and see what they capture, and then come back and hit the ground running and see if there are any spirits or energies left here at the Heyman house that want to talk to us. Absolutely. Let's do it, gentlemen. Cool. Next room. Whoa. The REM pod just went off up here. Hold on. Rolling. Abandonment. If you're here with me, if you're here with me, can you set off that device again? Can you touch that just like you did? Can you touch that for me again? Can you touch that for me again? Can you touch that for me again? Mr. Heyman, if you're up here, we'd love to talk to you. If you could show yourself to us. If you could touch some of these lights that we have set up, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Heyman House. This is the first floor entryway action cam. All right, if anyone is here with us, we're getting ready to leave the house. We have a lot of toys that you can play with, but this one in front of me, this one's the most important. If you touch this, you'll feel it give you energy. And uh, then you can use that to make stuff happen throughout the rest of the house. Beautiful. All right, we're leaving!
We said earlier, we're just here to communicate with you if you want to. We understand that we're guests in your house. We're here to help support your house, to help the current owners, the current caretakers, if you will. We're here to help them keep your house. What was in. that? Who's here? It was like a cl clanking sound. Yeah, it was like behind you, wasn't it? I heard it from over here. Was it? So we're here with the utmost respect for for you and in your house. So we hope that you're okay with that. EVP, this is the Heyman House, second floor, first session. We've heard that you'd like to communicate a lot with with the living, with people like us. Is it true? There are some devices here that if you touch them or get close to them, that they'll light up, probably make a sound. Which you probably know by now they won't hurt you. If you would do that, get close to something like that, it'll help us know that you're here. If you want, if you want to do that, of course. You do this, like see this device here, you reach out and touch it, see it does my finger. That's my energy. Can you make one and bring it over to my finger? I just had a weird... I don't want to say it's like... Because like I don't believe I'm sensitive or at least not in a vision type of way. But I had whoa, this... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we did not do it. That's I, just that. I just heard something in here. The movement. Yeah, I heard it. I just had a weird... I don't want to say it's like... At least not in a vision type of way. But I had this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I had this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't mean to interrupt you. I just let's do it. Right. But what's weird was I had this feeling like someone fell down these stairs. Is that true? Did someone fall down these stairs right here? There's an orange light sitting on the banister right over here. If you would like to speak to us, try and speak right into that orange light so that we can hear your voice. So that we can hear your voice. Set this up, up if we can. That was me. See how I did that? See how I walked over and touched that? And it lit up? Can you do that to let us know that you're here? And if you don't want to come downstairs, you can do the one right up here at the top of the steps. There's one right up there as well. Steve is setting up the EDI meter, a meter that measures ambient temperature response to changes in the EMF, barometric pressure and temperature of the environment. Well, it hit a point, that, that millimeter just hit a point one when you did that. 
whoa, whoa, whoa. 2.9, man. I literally was recording and as it hit a 2.9. Really? When that mail was going off. And it was right as soon as Steve walked up to it and then walked away. Was that you right here on the stairs when Steve set that down? If you walk up to that box with the green and orange lights on it, it'll let us know that you're here. And that's what happened when it lit up. Can you do it again for us? I'm about ready to take my shoes off. I don't know, I was thinking the same thing. Put them on to go to the basement, but that's about it. All right, so here's what we're gonna have to do, guys. Because, I don't know if you can see, when I shoot into this room, the floors in this Heyman house are so clean that I can see the reflection of the bed frame <laughs> in the floor like it's water, which is beautiful. Yeah. But the wax on the floor is causing our shoes to be mm -hmm. very squeaky. So we're gonna have to take our shoes off in order to make this work. Yes, we are. Nobody bump this chair because the music box is going to be pointed over this direction. Okay. Calibrating. Yeah, I don't like that room. <laughs> Yeah, just around that corner, I'm like, yeah, just not a good vibe. Hello to anyone who is here. My name is Ryan, this is Steve, and that's Dave. We're going to be spending the night here tonight. We hope that you'll come out and talk to us, whoever you are, whether you're a part of the Heyman family or someone that lived here after. We think you have a beautiful house, and... The current owner, Teresa, she invited us in. And our goal for being here is to talk to you and for you to show us that you can still communicate with us after death, after you pass on. And we'd love for you to come out and show us that you're still here. We'd love to hear your story. Because there's a lot of people that want to know if you're still here. Is there someone in this room that's that's upset, that's angry, for some reason, any reason at all. Let us know by making a, maybe knocking on the wall, maybe you see the door, you can move the door, something like that. We're not trying to be disrespectful or rude, we're just just addressing the way maybe that. What was that? Whoa. I heard that. Make communication, that was in the closet. Just addressing a way maybe that... What was that? Whoa! Just addressing a way maybe that... What was whoa. that? Whoa! I heard whatever that was. You want the door open or close? I'll help if you'll permit me. If I open it... This way. If I do that, and you want it closed, could you knock on something or move something in there again? What is that? Dude. Some... Wait, 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 wait. Something was moving in there. Yeah. What are you moving? Is it something you want us to find? You trying to share something with us? Or did you want the door closed? It's 
It's really weird that we haven't heard that sound from inside the closet again. I don't know. That was pretty freaky. Yeah. Sounded like someone rummaging around through the stuff in there. I just did that one time. I swear I was waiting for that door to slam shut. Mm-hmm. Mr. Heyman? I'm gonna set this right here. Wait for it to reset. That is not me. Whoa. Whoa. Hello? Holy crap. Whoa, what the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Let it go, let it go. Hello? Holy crap. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Holy crap. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Did you hear that voice when that went off? No. What the hell? Mr. Heyman, were you waiting for us? If that's you, can you please step away from that? Can you please step over here towards us, sir? Mr. Heyman, there's a device right here in my hand. I'm gonna put it right up here in the window so. Can you go touch that device there? Could you please step away from the device? Please? Or maybe you're not Mr. Heyman. Or if you're someone different and you're not W.E. Heyman, can you please step away from it now? Emma? Ethel? Are you the one who growls? What was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. I heard that. That was like a growl, dude. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Can you push that thing over here if that's you? But now watch. Move it back towards me a little bit. Okay, right, right, it's going off. Okay, move back towards going off. That is, that is where we're at. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, uh, that's weird. I thought it was something about that spot that it was sitting on. So I moved it out of that spot and it stopped going off. And I thought, okay, well, naturally, if it's something de debunkable, when I move it back, because I didn't reset it when I move it back, it should pick up on that static again, and it should alarm. And then you move back, and it, it, it didn't. Hmm. Mr. Heyman, is that you? Oh, oh. Something just touched my hand. Holy shit. Dude, can you please take this? Oh my god, that scared me to death. I've never felt a touch that hard on my hand before. I am not even kidding you, man. It was right across my fingertips. And literally every hair on my body is standing up. <laughs> every hair. Did you just touch Ryan? If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking <laughs> craziness, man. Okay. I didn't mean to react like that, it's just you startled me is all. When I walked out there, did you come over here again with me? That scared the out of me. I just saw something fly straight up in between you two. 
I was standing here filming you guys, and I had my other hand behind my back like this. And it was like a icy cold contact on my fingers, and it went across my hand. Hey, Rod. Yeah. Let's see. This one's really very rarely does the EMF trip on this one. Let's see what it does. Right next to it or near it or whatever. There's no there's no EMF right here. No. So what is setting that off? This attic is charged with paranormal activity. The disembodied voices. Hello? Holy crap. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? A cold and noticeable touch on my hand. Oh! oh. Something just touched my hand. Holy sh But in regards to the REM pod, at first it seemed responsive. Every hair. Did you just touch Ryan? If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking craziness, man. Now, it's just constant. There's no, there's no EMF right here. No. So what is setting that off? But the REM pod sat in this area for over an hour during the abandonment and was completely silent. But as it turns out, the answer to our question is a full floor below us. It is literally right. Below the static, but we don't think that thing's putting off, putting off that much static. You could turn it off, all the way over here. Yeah, turn it off. Turn this thing off. There we go. Immediately. Are you for real? It's pretty strong. This thing puts off that much static. Turn, turn it back on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Listen. Yeah. That's crazy. That's some freaking juice right there. This plasma ball has filled this whole third floor with so much static energy that it's triggering the REM pod almost to its max. And while this explains why we couldn't get the REM pod to stop alarming, it also could be why the third floor was off the charts with paranormal activity. It was a constant energy source for the spirits of the Heyman house to use in order to interact with us. The question is, how long will that energy last after the plasma ball is turned off? As we take a short break to come up with a game plan for the rest of the night, we leave this camera rolling in the attic. and taking this. Show the camera, the motion sensor. So that's what it'll look like. I'm headed upstairs. Going in. All right. Steve and I are down here on the first floor, 
and we're going to try to do some investigating. We're going to split up just a little bit. And Ryan went back to the attic. For some reason, I feel like he is strangely drawn to that attic tonight. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Which is... But she's the only one that was really touched up there, so... True. Mr. Haymond, they said that they believe that this is your office. If I owned this house, this would be my choice for my office as well. Such a beautiful view. Of the river. Okay, so we've got two different cat balls set up and then we have the music box set up. So if there's anything around, hopefully it'll set it off. Can you go down to the second floor and walk in front of those little white boxes on the floor? If you did that, that would really, really scare Dave and Steve. Pretty funny. At the top of the stairs, walk straight down the hallway until you get to the window. How about Emma? Emma, are you here with us? Emma Haymond, are you here with us? If you are, could you set off one of these devices? What happens after we die? Is there more after we die? In what way do we transform? I don't know, maybe they'll try communicating more with you, Steve. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Thank you. See how easy that is to do? We appreciate that. Can you do that again? Oh, I've got static all over me right now. Yeah. This whole room. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Who was it that made that ball go off? Can you say your name in three, two, one? So it's weird because when we first started investigating tonight, after we started on the second floor, we came up here and this was like a hot spot. I was touched on the hand. Um, we were hearing voices, but it's like it's gone quiet. Really quiet, too quiet even. Yeah. That was loud as can be. What do you think? You want to go over to the kitchen for a minute? Yeah, what about this ball? Who was it that Teresa heard growl at her up here? I'm by myself up here now. Can you do something to frighten me out of the house? That's what we came here for. Can you slam a door up here? We heard you like to mess with the doors and move them. We'd love to be able to see that. Hello, if there's anybody in here with us, could you? Could you come have a chat with us?
right? Ryan? That was not Ryan. That's twice we've heard that now. Did you? Can you push that ball down the little steps right there? set right here on the uh, right on the step before you come down onto the steps okay and we just heard it sounded like a, a door a thump a thud or something like that do you want to go see if you can yeah and I know it was nothing on the third floor because I didn't hear anything up there and if it would have been that door to the attic yeah. I for sure would have picked it up and heard it captured it so um, I'm gonna go upstairs to the second floor and try a couple doors okay and see if it actually we can recreate that sound. Okay. Do you want to try the attic door first, just in case? I don't know, man. If, if, if it would have been the attic door, I would have heard it. Okay. Uh, I think for sure it was definitely here on the second floor. What about this one? This is the closet at the very top of the stairs here. Do it again. Too clean. No. That's too clean. This is the bathroom door here. No. Still too clean. No. Is that it? No. Uh, here, I'm gonna go into the servants. I'm going into the servants' quarters. That closet that we kept hearing the sounds in earlier, I'm gonna try that. Okay. So that would be, what, right above? And I'm just gonna, since, since you said it wasn't too noticeable, I'm just gonna push on it. All right. Do it again. Dude. Dude, that's. Dude, that is, that's it. That, yeah. Like that? Oh, that, is, that was it. That is lighter. That is it. Yeah, that's this servant's closet right here. Which one? Where? Oh, in here. Right, right, right. It's the exact same closet earlier where we were getting the the weird sounds from inside of. That earlier. was that was yeah. it. That Those was the wrong sounds. But there's one area of the house that we haven't gotten to investigate yet, and I think it would be a good idea to to go check it out. It's the the basement. And what if to end the night? We did a, an Estes Method spirit box session Good job. down there in the basement. Let's do it. You so, want to simultaneously do like a mini abandonment in this room? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You want to get just an action cam and yeah, and a, and a REM pod? Action cam, REM pod recorder yeah. in this room while we're in the basement. Because if we've had activity in this room with that door twice tonight, mm -hmm. yeah. We should probably set something up on that. Yeah, let's do it, sure. We are in the basement. Yep. Of the Heyman house. And we are going to be doing an Estes Method Spirit Box session. Dave is listening. If there's anyone down here in the basement with us, my name is Ryan, this is Steve. In the other room, that's Dave. I thought I heard 
something say Steve? Yeah, this is Steve. Hello. Yes. It said yes. What's your name? Whoever said my name, I'd like to know your name. I think it's fair. I'd like to know your name, but would you please go over to Dave who's sitting in the chair and tell me your name through his his device. It's kind of like a megaphone or a microphone. Or a telephone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a way to talk to us. Her? Who is Who is her? Is there a lady here? Is there a lady of the house here? There was a male voice there, but I could not make it out. Mr. Hammond? Yes? Nice to meet you, sir. We love your house. Very low, okay. Would we be would we be able to maybe come back and visit again sometime? With your blessing, sir? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We sure can, sir. We can hear you. Would we have your blessing to come back to the house sometime? Female. Couldn't make it out. Is it is is this Emma or Ethel? Female, yes. I actually heard it all the way in here. Yeah. Who has the short dark hair? Emma, we heard from Teresa. She alluded that maybe your husband, Mr. Heymond, may have wanted to keep you close and may have buried you here on property. Is that true? Yes. Whereabouts are you buried? Are they? Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Or did they move you to a cemetery? Because we know you have a grave marker in a cemetery with your husband. Did they move your body, Emma, or did you? Are you still here, buried on property? Can you let us know? Mr. Heymond, Emma, are you still here? Can you give us more answers, please? What you told us is is great information, but it's a little a little vague. Are you still here on the property or did they move you? If you're on the property, say yes. Something moved right here. Cora? Right here on this corner. Are you guys tired? Are you ru running out of energy to communicate? Is that it? I don't know. I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. Are you still, you still have the headphones on? I just took them off to say that. 
This has been a bizarre spirit box session. When Teresa told us about one single newspaper article. But I did, we did find a small little newspaper clipping and all it said was uh, Mrs. Heyman had passed away at her home and would be buried there. And that's, that's it. I mean, it was just a very small thing. We had no idea it would lead to this intelligent conversation with a man that we believe to be Mr. Haymond. Mr. Haymond? Yes? Emma Haymond has a grave marker in Buchanan, West Virginia with her husband, and no one has found evidence of a grave site here on the property of this house. But this man seems to think that she's still here. Emma, we heard from Teresa, she alluded that maybe your husband, Mr. Haymond, may have wanted to keep you close and may have buried you here on property. Is that true? Yes. Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Or did they move you to a cemetery? It's hard to say for sure. More research needs to be done to find out the true whereabouts of Emma Heyman's remains. If she is still here at the house in Sutton, it would most definitely explain the paranormal activity. Hello? Holy crap. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Oh! oh. Something just touched my hand. We intend to return as soon as we can to help get more answers. I believe it's spirits. Their energy is just locked in this location. The energy of children being in this home. The rejection that some of these children felt, that energy, that emotion could be trapped within the walls. Hello? Whoa. The first group I had in here, um, they were downstairs and two of the gentlemen got bit. We heard that there is an entity here who likes to bite people and scratch people. Are you here? It was the same voice. That sounds like an old woman, man. I have cold chills so bad. You liar. I'm not lying. Can you knock that over? Can you do it one more time for us, just like I showed you? Did you hear that? I mean, you had deaths here. I want to know what's haunting here. Ooh, that was a child's voice. That was weird. Dave is going to open himself up to you. Not joking, my head is moving in the mirror. You know, you could feel, you know, what they left behind. You know, just the energy of children being in this home. I just know there's something here. And as soon as you walk in, man, my hair on my arm stands right up. And it's just that energy. It's like that heavy energy's in there. All right, Dave, we are officially inside the Beale Mansion. And this place is absolutely beautiful. It is. This is uh, unlike any place that we've been for a very long time. And the house is massive. Back then, they, they took pride and what they built, you know, it was, you know, you earned your money and you wanted to build something beautiful and this is what you got. Back in 1898, um, a gentleman from Toledo, Ohio came here. Uh, his name was Jerome Beal. He wanted to start a business, so he opened up a jewelry shop and he opened up a piano business right downtown Fremont, Ohio. Um, he built a home. He did not pass away here though. He sold the home to the Wolf family back in 1920. The Wolf family moved in and tragedy started um, hitting the family, like bad luck and stuff. Um, Clarence Wolf, the husband, was walking across the street here and got hit by a car. He did survive, but he had a lot of injuries. So over the years, he, was, he had bad health, you know, started decaying. So he did pass away in the house. In uh, 1966, Daisy Wolf, the wife, she started getting sick and she did pass away in the house. And I believe it's in the room back here because you could tell they had a switch for a calling and it was a bedroom back there. 
So the house sat empty for a few years and the Toledo Children's Foundation wanted to purchase a place for the mentally handicapped children, sick children and unwanted children. And they purchased this home and it was a, it was a group home for children for 25 years. And that is what people pick up on here. The energy of children, the sounds of children. And there's even rumors that children had died inside this house. Uh, a historian did tell me that uh, he thinks a boy either committed suicide or he had an accidental death that happened in the house. Interestingly enough too, he brought in an antique wheelchair that was not from this facility, but sitting right down here is a potty chair, a children's potty chair that would have been used when the facility was open. And you know, he talked about all the things that he found inside this house. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Was that a voice? Yeah, it sounded like a little kid. Yeah. He talked about all the things that he found inside this house. He talked about all the things that he found inside this house. Did you hear that? And if you have some of these relics still left over here from when the place was open, much like Steve's museum, you put all of those things into one place. And if they were attached to that, you know, their energy still may be here in this house attached to that still yet. I remember we were sitting in the one room and I, I asked for a knock. So I knocked on the floor and it sat quiet forever. And I swear to God that someone shot a gun off in here and went I, mean, I jumped out of my chair, I was like freaking out, you know, and I'm looking around, what the hell was that? The next day I came in here and I was standing in the dining room and I heard somebody walk around upstairs. So I called my girlfriend, I'm like, somebody's in this house. And she's like, well, go up there and look. So I go up there and there's nobody up there, but I could hear footsteps just walking around like, like they're just doing their thing. And I was thinking, you know, being a paranormal investigator, I'm like, man, is this place haunted? As soon as you walk into the house, I mean, any, I have owned this since July, and every time I walk in here, it, I get this weird feeling, but on that second floor, man, it's a whole different ballpark, man. I mean, the hair on my arm stands up. It could be the children trying to get your attention, like maybe they're surrounding you and you're just feeling that. It's really weird, but you, any kind of equipment you put up, it'll go nuts. Here we go. I really want to know children's names. You know, what happened? You know, were they abused here? Because I've heard stories, some guy told me that this place wasn't very nice. Is it true or not? I don't know, but I want to find that out. And that's why I love the teams to come in and give me their perspective on what they find and what information they can get. It's kind of like that looming feeling throughout, like something is watching you around each turn that you take. And one of the things that might be contributing to that is in this room right behind you, they actually put in a scrying mirror area. I do have a scrying room set up. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Um, what you do is you stare in the mirror and I actually had a couple that have never done it before. And they're like, they tried it and the lady saw what looked like a mentally challenged child look at her through the mirror. Um, and the gentleman saw a lady with a, like a bun on top of her head looking at him and they were freaked out. I mean, you think about the energies that this would unleash. People sitting here trying to tap in and use the mirrors to, to focus in on the energies or focus in on the spirits and the entities and allow themselves to be submerged into this house and what that may allow to come through as well. If we learned anything from our Davies House investigation, it is that the possibility of that actually being true of the communication through the mirrors, it, I mean, it's very possible, you know? Yeah. Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. It said mirror, man. What? There's something in the mirror. Really? That is weird. That is weird.
And from what we understand, all of these bedrooms, all of this space up here would have been used for the children to live in when this was a children's home. And they talk about the sounds of children, footsteps, movement, doors moving, paranormal activity that you would expect to see from children. And if any children are up here and can hear my voice, you're more than welcome to come out and play pranks on us. <laughs> if you want to touch us, if you want to push us, if you want to move stuff, knock things over, you're more than welcome to do that. And in fact, if you would do it, we would appreciate it. We're here to play tonight. Um, I remember I looked at the house and I wanted to get photos because I wanted to get an idea of what it would cost me to fix this house, never even thinking it's haunted or anything. So I called a realtor and he let me in. I was up in the attic and I was taking pictures and I heard somebody coughing like, I mean, they were coughing up a lung and I'm thinking, man, my girlfriend don't smoke. And I don't think he does. I mean, he might, but I'm thinking, I never even thought anything of it. And I came down and I came out, they were outside on the porch and I was like, who's coughing there? We weren't, nobody was coughing. But I heard coughing in the house. It was coming from the floor below. On up to the attic. Wow. Ugh. The key word when they talk about this children's home is it's unwanted children. And you think about the sadness that would bring, the rejection that some of these children felt, even if they didn't die here, even if their spirit is not here, that energy, that emotion could be trapped within the walls. Or it could have also created something. You talk about poltergeist, a spirit or an entity that is created from strong emotion. There could be a whole lot of things that we run into tonight that may be different than just a normal spirit. There's so much, I, I believe a house could hold energy because of what happened here. I mean, you had deaths here. You had children that were having a good time. Somebody actually took care of them from what I, you know, what I would believe. And their energy is left behind. I mean, you could be, you don't have to die at a location to haunt it. You know, your energy could just stay behind and be at that location. The basement, um, so the first group I had in here, um, they were downstairs and two of the gentlemen got bit. I didn't believe them at first, but they showed me that they had bite marks. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. And I'm thinking, demonic. And then um, I had a group in here a couple weeks later and I had them on a tour and the girl's like, ow, and she, she got scratched. And I'm thinking, oh man, this ain't gonna be good. <laughs> you know, I, I started thinking about the whole situation and I'm thinking, you know, I highly doubt it's demonic. And the reason I'm gonna tell you why is because children, they just want your attention. What's the first thing they do? They bite and they scratch and they pull hair. And that's what I'm believing that's down there. There's, there's, I call them the biter, but I believe it's a child that's trying to get somebody's attention. Definitely creepy down here. Yes, it is. And yes, I'm on high spider alert. Right here, this main room that we're standing in right now, at the bottom of the stairs, they've had multiple reports of people being scratched, people being bitten, and just having physical contact. So who knows whether it is a darker entity or it is just a child trying to get someone's attention. It could be either. But either way, who knows what's gonna happen to us tonight when we come down here and do that, if that's something that is common. That is something that we've never really dealt with before is having, you know, reported hauntings of somebody being bitten yeah. in a location. So that is, that's new to us and I'm very intrigued by that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if something like that happens tonight. I believe it's spirits, you know, the energy, their energy is just locked in this location and uh, it, it's just more, you know, exciting because I want to learn about what's here because it's my place. You know, when you go to other places, I'm doing the same thing for them. I'm trying to get them information of what's haunting. I want to know what's haunting here. But the sun is almost down and I think it's about time for us to set up our cameras, set up the equipment and try and find out what paranormal activity occurs inside the Beale Mansion when it is completely empty. So are you ready for our abandonment session tonight to get started with our investigation? I'm more than ready for the abandonment. And before we get started on the abandonment, quick plug real quick, we just dropped some new abandonment merch. So make sure that you head down to the description below, click on the merch link and go check out the new abandonment merch. Let's go. So 
So we're getting ready to leave for abandonment and we were downstairs. We had set this stuff up first, but unfortunately didn't roll on this camera yet because we wanted to save the record space for once we were actually getting ready to leave. And we were standing on the first level, getting ready to come up here and turn all of this stuff on. And we thought we heard the REM pod going off. All right, go for it. That's a, yeah, that was it. Well, if you touched that, thank you. We're gonna leave this here for you to play with. We put a nice little doll there beside it. So you can play with that. I didn't even realize you were coming upstairs again. That scared me. Sorry. And you see how Dave did that. He made the box chime and beep. And so if you step in front of it, it'll do that for us while we're gone. You just stand at the top of the stairs or in this area here. All right, so it is time for our abandonment session here. We're gonna leave Beale Manor completely empty to see what happens while we are gone. We're gonna be gone for about an hour. Now we have all four floors wired with cameras. We have one right here in the main entryway. This actually has the EDI plus meter, which measures different environmental changes as well as uh, checks for EMF and vibration as well. So if anything happens around this stairwell, it's gonna pick up on it. Now up on the second floor, we have the REM pod, some cat balls, as well as one of the two motion sensors. The second motion sensor is up in the attic, along with the mill meter. Yes. Now down in the basement, that's an area that's of particular interest to us because that is where people have frequently gotten bitten as well as scratched. So we have the paranormal music box down there, as well as the ghost tube. The ghost tube is running to see if it says anything relevant while we are gone down there in that basement. So it may give us some insight on whether or not this is a darker entity or whether this is just a child trying to get someone's attention so uh let's go ahead and leave and see what happens while we're gone dave you ready i'm more than ready let's do it let's head out just real quick i wanted to say to the spirits here in the beale mansion beale manor beale house whatever you want to call it we left a bunch of devices around in all of the different rooms leave and those are for you we want you to try and interact with them and uh See if you can figure out how to use them for us. Sin. We've been waiting a long, long time for someone to interact with them, so if you could do it, that would be very cool. <clears throat> We're leaving! Bless. Thank you, sir. Dead. Missing. This is a bizarre sequence of events. Just after seven minutes of us leaving, a soft and melodic tone can be heard that almost sounds like a woman singing or crying. And then, immediately after, a knock can be heard from the dining room. Which isn't weird in itself, but the EMF detector inside the EDI plus meter picks up on a quick spike of electromagnetic energy. And it's precisely in sync with the knock. We've been using the EDI plus meter for almost three years now, and we can count on one hand the number of times it's detected a spike in EMF, but it won't be the last time on this abandonment session.
Demon. Children. Over here. Devil. So we're going to start by doing a session in the attic, but we also have an action cam set up on the second floor. So we're going to start in the attic and then work our way back down to the second floor. Maybe even try and sit in that chair and do a scrying session to see what happens. us. Closing the door. So you can see we have the paranormal music box set up here on the chair. If anything of a different temperature than the ambient air moves in front of it, it'll start playing the music. So shall we head on up? Let's do it. Remember, watch your head going up here. Yes. What? I just got a whiff of something foul. Like it's not like the normal musty smell of an old building. It was like, and I don't smell it anymore. It was like, it was like foul. It's really weird. If there's anyone up here. My name is Ryan and this is Dave back here behind me. We came here to speak to you. 
so that you could tell your story. And hopefully, you'll feel comfortable enough to come out and speak to us. We brought devices and toys for you to use. They're all here for you to play with. This thing on the floor with the red light on it, it may look kind of strange, but it's just a fun light, it's just a fun light toy. If you touch it, it'll light up like this. Could somebody else try it? If there are any spirits here with us, my name is Dave, and this is Ryan right over here. And if you can, we'd like for you to try and communicate with us when we ask you questions. And you can respond using the radio that Ryan has. Or by touching one of these devices. Do you understand? I would leave. Did say I would leave? Are we bothering you? Are we intruding in your space? Because if you want us to leave, we'll just you just have to ask us. We're not mean guys. We're not mean-spirited. If you don't want us here, we'll go back downstairs. All you have to do is tell us. I can hear. I can hear. Is this Mr. Wolf? Can you speak more clearly through this? Hello? Whoa. Hello? Is this Daisy? Chai. That was the same voice. That sounds like an old woman, man. I have cold chills so bad. Daisy, are we talking to you now? Daisy, can you push that thing over that's on the table there? Go ahead and do it then. We'll turn our backs to you. How about that? We're gonna be, we're gonna end up going down to the second floor here if you don't want to talk to us up here. That was creepy. Yeah, it was. It sounded like a breathy voice went, help. Do you need help? Come on, it's not that hard. You just got to do this. Just like that. Can you do it for us? <laughs> strange. Strange. That's weird. That is strange, isn't it? Thank you for actually doing it again for me. Can you do it one more time for us, just like I showed you? Or you can do use that one down there. It does the same thing. Wow. Thank you. Just like that. You got it. Can you grab a hold of it now? It's a fun toy, isn't it? If you would rather us not be up here, can you try and touch that one more time and we'll leave you alone? For anyone that's down here that didn't hear us when we were in the attic, my name is Ryan and this is Dave and we really would just love to speak to you. Can you make a loud sound in whichever room was yours? Hmm. 
so far very quiet. Yeah, it is. No better time than the present to give the old scrying a try. Yeah. Scrying has been used in spiritualism and fortune telling for centuries. By peering in a reflective surface and clearing your mind, it's said you can begin to see things. Years ago, an old tradition of scrying led young women to gaze into a mirror in a darkened room to see if the faces of their future husbands would appear. But scientists say the imperfections in the mirror trick our brain's facial recognition system, making people falsely believe they're seeing someone else. So let's put this to the test, to see if anything unexplained appears to me as I stare at my own reflection in this mirror. Are you kidding me? What? I literally had a wide shot the whole time, went to zoom in on your face, and it blipped. Can you do that again? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Whoa. Is that you? Can you knock that over? Looks like you're having fun with it. Just like any good toy, we'll see if it bounces. A little harder. Push it. Just give it a kick. A little harder. Push it. A little harder. Push it. Where'd you go? Can you speak to us some more? Did a car just go by? No. I thought I saw a shadow go behind me. No cars. Who in the basement is scratching people, inviting people. If all you want is attention, here we are. Weird though that when I told it to knock it over that it like gave one of the strongest alarms that I've probably ever seen the millimeter do. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, it, it was like as if someone was desperately trying to push it over, like getting, like just grabbing a hold of it. Right, and then maybe expended all of its energy and nothing else has happened. Yeah. Do you want to try and sit here? Sure. All right. <clears throat> Dave is going to open himself up to you. Can you show yourself to him? If you can see me, please go over here to this light and try and touch it like you were doing before. Caught that. It's out of focus, but I caught it. Thank you. Is there something with the mirror? That helps you get into our world? Am I moving? No. Holy crap. Why? I'm looking at my... I'm not joking. My head is moving. In the mirror. 
You're sitting still. Who is that that Dave is seeing? Apparently you heard me before. Can you please try and close the closet door? The closet door is closed. Oh. That was weird. Why? I don't know. It just looked like it was open to me. Okay. I really don't know what I'm doing here, but this is like I've never done this before. But it's making me very nervous. What about it is making you nervous? I don't know. Can you touch the light again? Like you have been doing? There you go, you're doing it. So I'm going to be listening to the spirit box through the headphones and Dave's going to be asking the questions and the whole point of this method is to try and rule out pareidolia because I'm not going to know what he's asking and if any of my answers that I call out are correlating or are related to the questions that he asked, it could be someone answering us through the device. It's also important to point out that we're going to be recording the spirit box and playing it for you when I hear a response. That way you can listen right along with me, be immersed in the experience and be a part of this Estes method as well, which the other thing I forgot upstairs is the blindfold. So let me go get that. Rolling. We are sweeping. While performing the Estes method spirit box session in the basement, the thermal imaging camera is rolling in Daisy's room on the first floor. Because it's believed paranormal activity can cause temperature anomalies, a camera that sees in temperature is the perfect tool to capture this type of phenomena. I also wanted to point out, the headphones I'm using are new, because our older ones were damaged. And you'll see in this session, the audio quality of these headphones makes it nearly impossible for me to understand most of the responses coming through. This just reinforces our motivation to record the spirit box audio. Because even if I can't hear the responses in the moment, we can hear them now. Also, my apologies in advance for how angry you're about to see me get at these headphones. Okay. All right, so we are starting the Estes session here at the Beale Mansion. I, I thought I heard Ryan look, and then I heard look again. Oh, wow. Okay, we're already hearing. He's already hearing. Man's stuff. voice, all the same voice. Okay, I'm going to be asking a series of questions. My name is Dave, and this down here at the end of the hall is Ryan. Can you tell us what your name is? Ryan has a radio in his hand that you can use to communicate with us as I ask you questions. Can you please tell Ryan what your name is? We heard that there is an entity here, a spirit here, who likes to bite people and scratch people. Are you here? How come you bite people? Do you feel like you need to bite people to get their attention? Is that why you do that? Are you one of the children who stayed here? We heard that there were children who were unwanted by their parents and were left here. Stop. 
Stop. Stop. Man's what? voice. Stop what? Here? Can you please tell me your name? I want to know it. I don't want anybody here to be afraid. That was weird. It was like a full sentence. Did somebody hurt you while you were here? You li you liar? I'm not lying. Why would you say I'm lying? I'm just trying to help you. Don't you want somebody to listen to you? Listen to what you have to say? No. Does that upset you? Everything that I'm hearing is very distant. If you are speaking to me, try and take a step closer so I can hear you. Please I, can, get... I can't understand anything you guys are saying. Please get closer to Ryan down there. He's at the end of the hall. Mm. Sounded like a woman's voice there. Still couldn't understand what it said. Daisy, are you here? Please answer Ryan down there. He has a radio. He can hear you. God, these headphones are awful. Why? I can't understand a damn thing that any was, anyone is saying. It's so, like, bassy and thumpy. You can change it. Can you? Yeah, here, I'll do it. I thought the reason I couldn't hear any of the voices was because none of them were coming through clearly, but I'm now realizing it's the headphones that I'm using that are making them inaudible. Because we have been getting some relevant responses, I just can't hear them. Literally, it's been like useless. Dave shows me how to equalize the audio coming through the headphones, but as you're about to see, it doesn't help. See this button right here? Yeah. It's an equalizer button, just keep, it's the second one up. Keep pressing it until it sounds better. Okay. And the longer we continue, the more frustrated I become. Ryan's listening again. We were having some trouble hearing you, so... David? That's me. I'm David. Who is that down there? Do you remember his name? Dave? Yes, that's me. If you can actually hear me, can you tell Ryan how many fingers that I'm holding up? Ooh, that was a child's voice. That was weird. How many fingers? Dave. That's me. We heard that there is an entity or a spirit or a person down here who likes to bite people. Is that true? What are you doing here? Why are you down here? Something like that? There's a new owner of the house. Somebody bought it and they invited us to come in here and talk to you. So we're just here to say hello. Is that okay? If it's not, you can tell Ryan he's right down there. Man's voice couldn't make it out. Do you know that you're no longer living? What are you doing? How does it work? when we die.
Do we get to roam around the earth, or is there nothing after death? Why are you still here and able to hear us? These last two voices fascinate us. Dave's question of, Do we get to roam around the earth, or was answered with two responses. It's vague, but are they telling us there's some truth to the idea of spirit? A consciousness that lives on after death? We didn't have the opportunity to find out because after 32 minutes of frustration, I finally hit my breaking point. How be- Was that you? Yes, I can't f***ing hear anything through these. <laughs> it's f***ing pissing me off. We already have a hard enough time with it being just the two of us trying to do all of the things that we do and juggle all the things that we do to make the videos and investigate. And when technical difficulties pop up, it just gets me so angry and so mad because it's like we don't have time for it. Right. We, ne we don't have time for any sort of hiccup at all. Maybe, maybe something did come through and you just couldn't hear it. Maybe. I hope, if that's the case. God, that got me so raging pissed. I can tell. And ending. Despite my anger in the moment, there's relief in the safety net that's formed when we record the Spirit Box audio during these Estes sessions. If we relied fully on my ears to tell Dave what the voices were saying, this whole session would have been a waste of time. And we never would have known that someone was trying to answer our questions. Everything that I'm hearing is very distant. If you are speaking to me, try and take a step closer so I can hear you. As frustrated as I am in this moment, our formula worked, and their voices were heard, eventually. As for these headphones, they're going in a dumpster, so... All's well that ends well. All right, so we are getting started here with the sweep. We had an unsuccessful Estes session downstairs, or less than successful, we'll say. So we're gonna do an SLS sweep here and see what happens. If anybody would like their picture taken, can you go stand on the stairs right here in front of me? Can you try touching that bright red light right there? Right at the bottom of the stairs, please. Could you do that for me? Daisy, we put a Music box in your room there. Can you try and make that go off? Sweep back towards the living room here. Watch this. That one does it. That one does it. We're gonna go over here. Can you try and do that? Can you try and touch that? With your hand? What is that? It's just a noise maker. It lets us know you're here. It won't hurt you. You wanna try it? Anybody? Are there any children here that would like to let us know that they're here? Or maybe the wolf family? Mr. Wolf? Which bedroom did you pass away in? Can you tell us? 
Are you out here in the hallway? I'm trying to take your picture. Can you show yourself for me? Can you let us know you can hear us by touching the noisemakers downstairs like you did earlier? I will never live here. It's uncomfortable, especially when you're by yourself. Now that whole time I sat in there, you didn't do that. She passed away right here, sitting in a chair in front of the fireplace. And that chair is right here behind me. Whoa. And if any of that is true, that would leave behind a dark energy in here. She'll come. Is there something evil down here? Something crawled across the ceiling and that just didn't seem okay. I just heard a child laughing. Oh, wow. No, dude. I heard a child laughing and then that SLS figure popped up on there. Once the sun goes down on McIntyre Villa, that's a little bit of a different story in here. We're pulling up on one of the biggest mansions that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, this is a place that is known for its paranormal activity and even has had nine documented deaths. And it is creepy looking. Wow. <laughs> I feel like this place is gonna be really creepy when the sun goes down tonight. I agree with that. Well, we know this place has a presence from the outside. You want to go inside and see what type of presences we can pick up on in there? Let's do it. Let's go check it out. Let's do it. In my opinion, McIntyre Villa is haunted. Mr. McIntyre came from Ireland. I think he arrived in Atchison about 1861. He was a saddle and harness maker. He was also into real estate. Mr. McIntyre's first wife's name was Alice. This house he had built in 1889, finished in 1890 for $14,000. It was built in one year. I don't know if it was built fast because his first wife was ill, but his first wife died after one year. It is so cool to be here inside the historic and haunted McIntyre Villa. It is, this is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever seen. It's, everything is just immaculate. The place is very creepy and uh, we've already had some stuff happening. I do know now that anyone can come through. My dad helped me buy the house four years ago and he comes through. So not to me, but he comes through to guests. They've written in the book downstairs that we talked to your dad. Why did that just die? I don't know. We've barely, we've My only- My dad's here. We've only I just used mentioned it. him. Yeah, we've only used that for like a, an hour. What's his name? Ernie. Where did it die? I'm, where did it die? Well, where did it, what turned off? This? The light behind you. His, his urn is right here. His urn is right beside Yeah. When I, look at this, I just walked through that room and I just got hit with a bit, I don't know what it symbolizes, but a big like floral, scent just hit me right in the face. Oh, like fresh cut flowers, kind yeah. of? Fresh cut flowers, exactly. But the fresh cut flowers isn't that often at all. I've smelled it maybe twice in the four years I've had the house. Really? Was yeah. it in this room? It was actually in the dining room and then once in this room. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's creepy. That is creepy. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Yeah, right. literally, we, we haven't even started investigating yet. And we're already <laughs> getting weird activity. This uh, is why the second floor is my favorite out of the entire 5,200 square feet, this hallway is my favorite place to investigate. Nine confirmed deaths inside this house. 
and possibly other spirits and entities that have been known to interact, insult, growl at people who come to visit this building. I have been told that everyone who has owned and lived in the house has died in the house. I don't live here. <laughs> Out of the nine deaths that I know of so far at the villa, all of them have been natural causes except for one, which was Charles Donovan, Mr. McIntyre's second wife's youngest son. He committed suicide October 10th, 1922. Anna's brother, who was a judge in Atchison, moved in. His name was Charles. He moved in with his wife. He did not die here, but he is the one that found his nephew Charles after he committed suicide. Anna was Mr. McIntyre's second wife. Her mother, Anna, passed away in 1898. Then Mr. McIntyre passed away of dropsy uh, in 1902. Mrs. McIntyre passed away in 1916. Um, it, would be, it became a boarding house 1925 to 1952. In that time frame, I've only found one death and that was a four day old infant. After that, Goldie bought the house, and Goldie or Isabel Altus, she lived her by herself from 1952 until she passed away in 1969. And then Mr. and Mrs. Girardi, who bought the house from Goldie, they both passed away in the home. The death that occurred in this room was that of a woman named Isabel Altus, who went by the name Goldie. She passed away right here, sitting in a chair in front of the fireplace. And that chair is right here behind me. The very chair. This is the chair that Goldie, Isabel, passed away in. And if you think of something that could hold energy, that moment in life, literally her transition from life to death to spirit happened in this chair. So who knows what is attached to this chair. Goldie, if you're here, we don't want you to think we're intruding. We're here to speak to you and speak to the many other people who I'm sure you know live in this house. Stephanie says she could never really live here because of how creepy and haunted this house is. And I'm sure you had experiences when you lived here in the 50s and 60s. So maybe a little bit later, Goldie, you'll, uh, you'll be able to show up for us or maybe you can move your chair as we've heard you've done in the past. Maybe you could do that for us a little bit later. People ask me all the time why I don't live here. I will never live here. And that's not to say that I don't love the house. I love this house. It's uncomfortable, especially when you're by yourself. Whatever is here knows when I'm by myself and it's like game on. There are growls, the footsteps. I wear headphones when I'm here by myself and I can tune out the footsteps but I can't tune out the vibration of the footsteps and it will walk right up to me and just stop. I think we should save the part of the house that Stephanie believes is most active for last, the basement. So let's head up to the attic. Let's do it. The attic used to be what I would tell people was the least active. It never made me uncomfortable. So when I first bought the house, I am a fan of bright colors. So I painted the door red. That was the time I actually knew that the house did not like my dog or didn't like me painting the door red. My dog was here with me and she's a six pound Yorkie and she was knocked off of a chair. <sighs> That's not creepy or anything. It's pretty, pretty much a full-size attic. It is, yeah. This is huge. The attic has been really uncomfortable lately. You can feel somebody walking behind you when you leave the attic. You can feel somebody walking up behind you, um, just going into the attic. I have been shushed. Like, a female just put her head right by my head and went, shh. Um, lots of whispering from women. The men, they are loud. I don't know who's in the attic. I have no idea. I have been told though, there's possibly a hanging in the attic, either a suicide or hung to look like a suicide. 
No documentation, so I don't know. Uh, I've been told his name is David. You share a name with him, right? I do, yes, we, we have the same name. Maybe you should spend some time up here and see if you can connect with this David, David spirit. Yeah, absolutely. The basement has seven rooms. It has the original brick floor in most of the rooms. It's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face. One of the, uh, the spirits, or I hate to use things, but I don't know if it's a human or if it was ever a human. If it, something crawled across the ceiling and that just didn't seem okay. I've been told from multiple people over the four years that I've owned the house that there are possibly illegal adoptions, illegal liquor sales, illegal medical procedures on women. I don't have documentation, so I don't know if any of those took place in the basement. And if any of that is true, that would leave behind a dark energy in here. Yeah, I mean, with all of that stuff going on down here, you know, allegedly, if any of it were to be true, you know, that would leave behind a lot of dark energy. So I have this doll, and he's an original Charlie McCarthy doll, which um, I believe from the early 30s, 1930s. And he's a ventriloquist doll. I think he's super adorable. 99% of the people that come here don't like him. <laughs> so I happened to put my recorder on the ventriloquist doll, on Charlie, and I said, hi, Charlie, and I walked into a, the other room to, so we could start asking questions. And we picked up, my name is Jack. A few months later, two gentlemen were here and they were doing some filming and they called me up and they said, you know your doll's name is Jack. I'm like. And I'm interested to come in here and see exactly what type of paranormal activity we can capture here tonight to see if these spirits or even these darker entities will come out and speak to us. Who knows? But with the sun going down, I think it's about time to set up for abandonment. Let's do it. I'm excited to see what this one uh, has in store for us. Hopefully we will catch that thing crawling across the ceiling. That would be amazing. So yeah, let's set up cameras on every single floor, set up all the equipment that we can and leave the house for an hour find out what happens in McIntyre Villa when it's completely empty. In McIntyre Villa when it's completely empty. When it's completely empty. All right, so we are getting ready to leave the house. We have four cameras set up throughout. On the first level above our heads, we have an action cam covering as much possible area as we can. There are motion sensors, four of them on that first floor all throughout. If anything moves on that first floor, we're gonna know about it because those motion sensors are gonna go off. And we have a REM pod sitting in Goldie's chair, the chair that she passed away in. Second floor, we have cat balls lining the hallway, those motion activated ones that flash. They're sitting still, so if they flash, could be paranormal. Also, there's a mail meter on that second floor right in front of the camera that can pick up on EMF as well as ambient temperature, and it is the REM mail, so it has, just like a REM pod, proximity. If anything touches it, it's gonna go off. Top floor, we have a camera in the attic with an EDI plus meter. Now that meter measures ambient temperature as well as EMF, vibration, humidity, barometric pressure, has a bunch of lights that flash, so if anything changes environmentally up there, we're gonna know about it. Down here in the basement, the plasma ball is set up charging the atmosphere, the environment, and hopefully the spirits can use that energy to communicate with us. We moved Jack, or Charlie, the ventriloquist dummy, over here in front of the camera so the camera can see it. Sitting in front of him is a cat ball as well. If anything touches it, it's gonna light up. It's gonna be right at his feet. And because Stephanie told us that there were a lot of child spirits down here, we set up the music box, the paranormal music box right here on the steps. So if anything walks through this area at the bottom of the stairs, the music box is gonna go off. And uh, there's also a cat ball way back behind me here as well. So let's leave the house, Dave, and see what the equipment picks up on. Let's do it. 
Now we're leaving. Is there someone in that bathroom? This is audio session. It's, it's, here. look, it just, it's pegging all the way. We're not even set up yet. We're trying to place equipment. And we had the idea to put that REM pod in the bathroom. The end hallway bathroom down here is the most active. A lot of people don't want to use it. And I tell people, I'm not sure which room Charles committed suicide in. I, in my opinion, I think it's either the library or it's when the two bathrooms were one room. I personally think it's when the two bathrooms were one room. Wow. Charles, if that's you, can you step back, please? Dude. Who's in there? Charles, if that is the bathroom, or if that is the room where you lost your life, can you touch it again for us? Stephanie said that you've slammed doors in there, the cabinet doors. Can you slam the cabinet doors? Is this the little kid, the little girl that people see and hear laughing up here all the time? Or is this Charles? Tell you what. What? I'm covered in chills and my left side is freezing cold. Who is standing right beside Dave? Is that Goldie or is it Alice? Ooh, I feel that now. The cold's moved down to me. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's like... I felt it was like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a breeze, it was just a moving, like a slow moving mass of air that just came in and it was colder. Oh wow, actually. What? It feels very cold right here. Yeah, that's just where I was standing. If you really want to, you can move stuff. We'd love to see it. I'll tell you what, once the sun goes down on McIntyre Villa, it's a little bit of a different story in here. Yeah. You can do it. Shut one of the doors for us. Who was making that red light go off in the bathroom there? This is Dave Ryan, first session, McIntyre Villa. I'm gonna come down and set this orange light in the bathroom, in this room here to the right. Move, Dave? Huh? Can you move? I thought I just saw like the shadow movement right here on the wall. Really? Yeah. You wanna head in there for a minute? Yeah. I thought I saw movement within this light right here on the wall. Yeah, I don't know what that would have been. Stephanie did give us permission to be in here tonight to talk to you. We might not have introduced ourselves. My name is Dave, and this is Ryan. And we're just here trying to communicate with you in your house. So if you could communicate back by touching that red light in the bathroom, could you do it now? It's right on the sink. It would also be cool to see something fly off the mantle in here like it has before. Do you want to sit in the library? I can. I was saying, I know you said you felt uncomfortable in the library. What if I went down here to this far back right hand room and you went into the library here? Okay. A little split, a little, uh, whoa. Hello? Huh. That was weird. Are you waiting for Dave? All right, well, here I am. I would like to say that neither one of us mean anybody here any harm. We're pretty nice guys. We just wanted to come here and talk to you. Is that okay? If it is, you can light that up. Charles? Charles, if you're in here, can you tell us, please, what happened to you? Don't be afraid to talk to us. Somebody was here earlier. Oh. Is that that you? was me. I'm, I don't feel anything in this room back here. I don't either.
Somebody was really making that red light go off down there in the bathroom. Why did you quit? Now that whole time I sat in there, you didn't do that. Well, you want to pack this stuff up and, or break this stuff down and try something else? Yeah, I think we should, uh, I think we should try and cover as much area as we can while staying I think we should try and cover as much area as we can while staying. I think we should try and cover as much area as we can while staying. I think we should try and cover as much area as we can without being too close to one another. So I think the best plan of action would be for one of us to go to the attic and one of us to go to the basement. Maybe splitting up and us being alone, they'll feel more comfortable to come out and talk to us. Can you latch this lock across the door when I go down here? Yes. Just what I've always wanted, to lock you in the basement. See ya. Have fun in the attic. I will. All right, he is locked in. He is not coming out. I'm officially locked in. All right, guys, we are heading up to the attic. And we're gonna see what happens for us up here. That was me. Okay. Okay, Dave rolling. This is Attic Solo. Got an action cam set up there, rim pod over there. Whoa. Hello? And of course the camcorder stopped going. All right guys, Dave here in the attic. Ryan is down in the basement, and uh, the rim pod was going off there just a second ago, uh, but I missed it on this camera. Okay. Whoa. Hello? Can you step in front of that again for me? I just had the motion sensor go off for no reason. It's the first time that motion sensor has gone off all night long. So my name is Dave, and I'm up here by myself. I came up to talk to you. Is there anybody up here with me? Is there somebody else other than myself up here named David? If there is, there's a bright red light right here in front of me. So if you'd like to answer my questions with a yes, you can make that go off. And for no, 
you don't have to make it go off at all. All right. Who was just out there moving in front of the motion sensor? Is there something evil down here? They say they've seen us. <laughs> they say they've seen a dark shadow crawling on the ceiling. Is it how so? What happened down here? Are there any other spirits up here? Are any of the McIntyre family members here with me? I just heard a knocking sound right over here. heard a knocking sound right over here. This is a beautiful, beautiful house you have here. I just heard it again. Are you over there in the corner? I got, I got cold chills. I don't know why. Are you down here with me now? Whoa. Thank you. Can, thank you. Can you touch those lights and make them light up? If you're a child, thank you. Can you touch those lights if you died here? If you passed away? I was told there may have been a gentleman by the name of David who hurt himself up here. Is that true? If that's true, can you set this off? I just want to try and talk to somebody, that's all. I'm the only person up here. Kind of lonely, I figured I would try and talk to you. My friend Ryan is downstairs in the basement. He's running a camera that can see you. If you stand in front of it, could you go, t could you go show yourself to him? Where's the figure that crawls on the ceiling? Who's back here? Should I go back into this room? Light up that box in there if you think I should go back in here. All right. Moving motion sensor. Maybe you don't understand, but for me, you have passed on. 
you've passed away, and I'm still living, and the current owner of the house believes that she hears your spirit here. Is that true? We don't really know how it works, what happens after we die, so that's why we're here. That's why I'm trying to make communication with you. Or maybe you've, you're you still alive and I'm dead and I'm just a ghost in your attic. Is that how it works? Yeah, I'm headed back in here. I'm coming back into this room right here. I just heard a child laughing. What the f Oh wow. No dude. I heard a child laughing and then that SLS figure popped up on there. Are you in front of me? I just heard a child laughing. I hope that my microphone that I have on my person because all the cameras are out here. I hope one of these cameras or my microphone picked up the sound of that child laughing because that was creepy. And I looked around. I was standing right where the SLS is right now, right here, and I looked around and I tried to search for some sort of source from, of that noise. And I wasn't looking at the screen and I looked back down and there was something in front of me on the SLS. That was weird. Let's go in here and set this up here. I want to ask one more time, was there a gentleman who took his life up here? Well, if he did, and he's here listening to me, I'm sorry that you felt that was the only way to to change things. But I hope you did find peace. Thank you very much. Okay. So, we got both the SLS and the static cam here. I haven't heard that millimeter go off in a little while. That's kind of strange that that just stopped going off. I don't know why. I don't know why it was going off in the first place. There he is. Anything happen up there? Not so much. Goldie, if you're here, can you go over and talk to Dave? He's sitting in your chair. We don't mean any disrespect by sitting in that chair. It's just our way of trying to create a connection between us. Beside him is a globe of light. You can try and use that to get the energy to speak.
Hmm. Did you just fall? No. I just walked through this area right here, that's it. Do what you did again. Okay. Me came across. Me. I felt like pressure, like I felt the floor go like that, like, but I thought you were like moving around over here. No, I was back here in this doorway and I walked through this doorway, but it was weird because I looked over and these balloons, I don't know if you remember how these balloons were. Not really. Because they're like in a perfect line over here by this fainting couch. Really? I don't remember them being set up three in a row in a perfect line like that. No, me either, because I kicked them out of the way earlier. And I didn't kick them into a straight line. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I just happened to look over and I was like, oh, that's kind of strange that they're sitting perfectly. That is weird. Is this your violin, Isabel? I know that's you in the picture here. At 12 years old. Stephanie told us you were really talented. Miss Aldous, when you lived here, did you think that this house was haunted? Did you ever have any experiences with spirits? I thought I heard hey or me or something like that. It was a male voice. Hello. You. Same voice. Me? What about me? Are you talking about Dave? What's your name, sir? I would love to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you. Goldie, this chair is pretty uncomfortable, you know? You getting anything? No. I did not a voice has come through. From the moment we first got here, we had weird stuff happen, like the panel, the battery pack on our interview light dying. So, not to me, but he comes through to guess they've written in the book downstairs that we talked to your dad. And then the just sudden burst of energy when the REM pod started to go off. Charles, if that's you, can you step back, please? Dude. The more we've acclimated to the energy of the villa, the more the energy of the villa has acclimated to us. And it's just whoever was curious of us at the beginning of the night doesn't seem to be curious of us now. I think the spirits of McIntyre Villa have made themselves known to us and as, as, as morning approaches, I don't think there's anything else that we can do to get activity. So, you ready to just pack it up and hit the road? I am, those morning birds are starting to chirp and I think it's time. Another one in the books, guys, another one in the books.